I'm joined now by author, historian and political biographer Sir Anthony Selden. Sir Anthony, lovely to see you this morning. Thank you for coming in. Been a lot of news, hasn't there? What was your reaction to the Princess of Wales announcing that she had cancer on Friday night? Well, incredibly upset. I mean, yeah. it, it's very sad, that poor family, uh, the children. And uh, she is just the most popular uh, figure in the royal family, just mm. edging Prince William is also extremely popular. I think uh, most people would be saddened and shocked. But I don't think the royal family is in crisis mm. because none of the conditions for a royal family crisis exist at the moment. It's just very sad to have both the king... Uh, and now her, um, ill with this terrible disease, and let's hope it you know, they recover soon, but uh, it's not a crisis. Hopefully they'll be taking comfort from each other and going through treatment at the same time. Um, I appreciate what you're saying about it not being crisis, but doesn't the monarchy appear to have been too slimmed down? I mean, it does seem as if, and I appreciate, uh, actually, even before these health problems... Mm -hmm. You know, it's we're starting to look a bit too thin on the ground in the absence of Harry and Meghan mm. and indeed the Duke of York, like him or loathe him. Uh, so um, I think, I mean, Camilla, you love history and uh, in history, the idea of a wider royal family really hasn't been there. The mm. spotlight has just been on the monarch and on the spouse and the principal interest in the spouse has been the person who's going to secure the royal succession. The moments of real crisis have been when we haven't known who the successor is going to yes. be. Now the succession is secure into the 22nd century, uh, at least. Uh, and so there's not that crisis. Um, but the notion of a wider royal family is relatively new. And, you know, look, let's hope that the king recovers soon. Mm. I mean, he is hyperactive. You know that. Yes. He has so many He's interests. He, he, he is a workaholic. Uh, even if he can't recover to that same extent, yeah. uh, he'll be out there as soon as he's, his doctors say that he can. Uh, and so is, will she. I mean, she loves um, the work and how very blessed, really, the royal family, but the country are to have such a popular, such a public-spirited, um, such a uh, admirable person yeah. as the princess Absolutely. Of, of, we wish her the Wales. very best with her treatment. And, and um, so, so no crisis, just a lot of sadness and, and worry, but Fair let's enough. take them at their word that they'll soon be through it. Well, let's talk about somewhere where there is a crisis, the Tory party. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, succession planning there. I mean, what are your predictions for the election and who comes after Rishi Sunak? Because you've obviously written books about recent successive prime ministers and there's been, you've been quite yeah. busy over the course of the last few years because the Tories have obviously committed regicide on more than one occasion. But your prediction for the election, first of all, and then for Rishi Sunak's replacement, Sir Anthony? So, um, Labour are likely to win. Now, the, the polls narrow the closer you get to a general election. We know that. So the question is, how much uh, will, they, will they narrow? At the moment, the likelihood of a Tory uh, victory is slim, even with a new leader, if the party does that, which I think history would show would be a mistake. Yeah. So it will be a Labour victory with perhaps a majority of 50 to a 100 is is uh, a, a good kind of guess at the moment. Who will take over from Rishi Sunak? My guess is whoever takes over after that election defeat, if indeed it waits that long, uh, will not be the next Tory prime minister. The person who takes over is rarely the person who then goes on. Yes. But there'll be somebody who's got to rebuild the Tory party. I mean, what on earth does the Tory party believe in now? Good question. Um, I mean, it created Brexit, but it didn't know what to do with Brexit. Mm. If you look back over the last 14 years, it's been full of ministerial churn, inconsistency. It's very hard to find the Tory party digging deep into its core values and uh, providing the kind of consistency of purpose and indeed the moral leadership that we rightly expect from the Tory party. So it has been, I'm afraid to say, a pretty unhappy period for Tory party rule compared to 1951 to 64 or 1979 to 1997 under Thatcher and Major. It, it just simply doesn't compare to that period or indeed early, earlier periods of Tory government. So what do you so, make of talk then of comebacks, either by David Cameron, who yes. is now being touted potentially as a future Tory leader again, and of course, your old friend Boris Johnson? So um, I don't think that uh, it would be wise 
I think history would show that it's not wise for a party to have a new leader. Now, that did happen in 1955, where Anthony Eden took over the month before a general election, and the Tories did very well in that election. So there is a bit of history there. But I think after so much churn, it would look poor. Uh, I think David Cameron was technically a, a, a very proficient prime minister. I think also not everyone agrees, obviously, that Rishi Sunak is, is uh, the best prime minister technically mm. since David Cameron. But uh, I think that he could have perhaps done more. And with Jeremy Hunt, I mean, that's a, a that's a, a grown up team. But the conditions were so adverse, and I think perhaps more could have been done yes. to have lowered expectations of what could be achieved by anyone taking over from Liz Truss, because really their room for manoeuvre was remarkably slight. And I think had they made it clear that they were trying to uh, govern in the interests of the country with a, a more consistent uh, sort through policy, uh, that would have been helpful. But look, I think he's done probably as well. I think history will say that he's done probably as well as any leader could do. It's, you do not want to come in as a prime minister and be a mm. tail end Charlie taking over at the end of a long period of one party rule. And your thoughts on a Boris Johnson comeback? I mean, I went well, I think to it's your, unlikely. your He's lecture very popular. at the Hampstead Synagogue he... and you said he was the worst prime minister in British history. I think he had a lot of promise. He had many, or, or some, to many of the attributes that great prime ministers need. He's very good at, uh, at, at creating a sense of momentum, a sense of excitement. I think he mm -hmm. fell down in as prime minister. He fell down because he didn't have the same strong team that he had around him when he was in City Hall for those eight years. So is he this knight in shining armour for the Tory? I think that he isn't, and I think it would be a, a mistake for the Tory party. But look, you know, it's down to them. And if they want to make that, uh, then I think uh, that it would, I think it's unlikely to come back well, because he's unlikely to be any better second time round. Yeah. It's a shame, because Boris Johnson could have been, as I argued um, before he became prime minister, he had the potential and the opportunity to be yes. um, a significant prime minister. The great prime ministers in history are often there at times of big historical moments. Uh, there was the, uh, the, there was obviously the epidemic. Uh, there was the chance to really make something of Brexit. Mm -hmm. And then there was the Ukraine war, which he did well at. Uh, but he could have seized those opportunities more. Uh, I'm a, f I, I think that history will say that he did fall short and didn't provide the kind of leadership. Uh, that we we should expect from a you're, Prime Minister. You're currently working on your Truss at 10 yes. book, which is out in September. I mean, who do you blame more for the demise of the Tories, Truss or Johnson? Well, I think in different ways. I think that uh, uh, that if you look at the polling, that she did a lot of damage to the Tory party support, whereas Boris Johnson, the popularity of the party, uh, was quite high when he left. Uh, I think in terms of the economy, she did has done significant ongoing damage. But, you know, it, it again, it's a puzzle. She came to office with more experience mm. of how to be a minister than any prime minister in 30 years. And she had a plan, which was was a good growth plan. Yes. Uh, but it wasn't, she didn't roll the pitch. She, um, she said that Margaret Thatcher was her great hero, but Margaret Thatcher bided her time for two years. She rolled the pitch. She caught people behind her before going in. Uh, Liz Truss was mesmerised by the fact there'd be a general election in 18 months and she had to get in there very early and she simply moved too quickly and, and without enough premeditation. Yeah. Um, can I ask you to put your headmasterly mortarboard on just for my final question? You obviously took over Epsom College after the tragic death of former head teacher Emma Patterson. I just wondered, how are the students? How are the teachers? How's it going at Epsom? So Epsom is Epsom College in Surrey is a, a wonderful school. I've been very, very proud to have been the head for 18 months. I didn't think I've ever enjoyed or, or, or felt that a, a job has been more worthwhile than that. Um, I think more generally, I think mental health of young people has taken a hit mm. um, and their ability to think through the skills that they're going to need for the workplace has taken a, a hit in schools at large. And, you know, you can be very good at exams, but that's a long way short of being prepared for the job market or even to cope at university. So I think that uh, we need to be thinking more in general about young people and how to give them resilience and, and character skills and, yes. and, and determination uh, to allow them to, to flourish in life. Post-COVID coping strategies, perhaps. Absolutely, Camilla. Um, Sir Anthony, will you come back and tell us about the book once it's out, Trust at Thames, coming out, I believe, in September? Thank you very much. I would love to do okay. that. Okay.
Thank you very much indeed for joining me this morning. Thank Lovely you. to see you.